Welcome to the Holistic Inner Balance Podcast with Dr. Nicole Kane and Happy Healthy Hadley, your go-to resource for natural mental health and wellness strategies so that you can become the expert of your own emotional and physical well-being. Merging modern science with ancient wisdom. It's summer, it's bathing suit season, and the that girl trend is raging. That girl wakes up meditating on her yoga mat, facing the sunrise. Next to the mat, she has a organic green juice. And she does a perfect vinyasa pose, sun salutations opening her heart, her crown chakra blazing. She goes inside, has avocado toast with a poached egg. Of course, the egg came from her chickens that she has out in the yard. This girl, she's got her stuff together. This girl is that girl and That girl is what we're going to be talking about today. (laughs) Don't forget the phone. She has her phone recording all of it. So that you can follow live on Instagram or TikTok or whatever social media platform you love. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have to say the that girl trend. (laughs) We were talking about this earlier and I was like, that sounds like my morning. (laughs) And so, you know, if if we're kind of making fun of this trend, but if you do these things, great. And if you don't do these things, great. We're not we're not judging it really here. We're just kind of poking fun at the the trend that it is, the, you know, uh the perfection that it is. And I am all about breaking out of perfection and not doing the whole perfectionism thing, the all or nothing thing. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about body image. We're going to talk about diet culture, and we're going to talk about this trend that is the that girl trend. Hashtag that girl. (laughs) And I hadn't actually heard about this until Hadley, you brought it up because Mm -hmm. I live under a rock and my morning is really different. (laughs) I wake up and I like literally take my fingers and I peel my eyes open (laughs) and then I moan coffee and I stagger to the kitchen and I make coffee. And then after about 20 minutes of drinking my stimulant of choice, I am then human and I can open both eye holes. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. And I think you guys, I mean... If you resonate with that, that's probably most of us here, right? <laughs> so that's totally fine if that's you. And we want to talk about the fact that this, like, that girl t- trend is, for a lot of people, not super realistic. Um, you know, one of the big habits that I focus on with my clients is actually a morning routine. I'm all about a morning routine. I love it. And... I don't think that it is super realistic to do all of the things. Plus, there's this element of, with the that girl trend at least, and a lot of times with morning routines in general, right? Like, if you go on YouTube and type in morning routines, you there will be thousands, hundreds of thousands of people with, like, their morning routine up or on Instagram or on TikTok. Um, and... It's really fun to look at. Like there, you know, it's aesthetic. It's all, it's beautiful. It's it's kind of like romantic, um, and you know that can all be great. Uh, and I think having that be the standard of wellness. So if we can't do that first thing in the morning, we feel like we've failed. We feel like we're a failure for the rest of the day. And we're like, well, like I ruined it for today. I didn't do my morning routine today. So like, screw it. I'm just going to do all the other things that aren't healthy and I'll start again tomorrow. I think that's, that's my gripe with this trend. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I resonate with that. I like that you're saying that is this like feeling of a goal that I have to achieve because it's a representation of my level of success and achievement. Yeah. 
And I even kind of perpetuate this with my students in a sense where I teach about the morning mastery routine. So like you get up, you do these things and they are health promoting. But I think the difference that you're kind of pointing out is the mindset that's around it. And you also told me that this is, you know, kind of a rebrand of a different kind of pop culture morning mastery thing. What was it that you called it? Yeah, so it wasn't necessarily morning mastery, but it was um, it was called Fitzbo, and it's still a thing. But it was very popular when I was like in college and in grad school, which was like six, five or six years ago, um, and it was. Basically, like, how you look. It's like you look fit, essentially. Fitspiration, Fitspo. Mm. And I, you know, this is slightly better. <laughs> I will say that. It, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> um, where it's not necessarily about what your body looks like. Um, rather, it's like the things that you're doing. And so it's kind of a step up from that Fitspiration, Fitspo trend, I would say. But... Uh, It's very easy to look at the that girl trend and be like, well, feel like A, feel like a failure. B, uh, get into that all or nothing mindset of like, well, if I didn't do it the right way, quote unquote, if I didn't do it the way that I saw it done on TikTok or on Instagram or whatever, then... I am, you know, not doing it right. And so I'm going to put off doing it right until tomorrow or I'll try again later. Or maybe I just won't try again at all. And I'm just not going to do that at all. And I'm not going to do health. And that's, you know, it's just not realistic for me. And so it's, it's still narrow minded. And, and I think that if we didn't live in a society that was diet culture, then it might be fine. (laughs) But we do live in a diet culture society, unfortunately. And basically what that means is uh, diet culture is essentially, for those of you who, you know, have maybe heard the term, but aren't sure exactly what the definition is. It's not just about dieting. It's really a society where we value weight, shape and size and thinness over someone's actual health and well-being. And that is basically the kind of the the water that we're swimming in (laughs) right now it so permeates most of what we do um that it's it also permeates the that girl trend essentially so it what you're kind of describing is the externalization of value into what am i doing what are the steps that i'm taking how is this going to show up in a photograph Mm -hmm as opposed to more of a mindset that's how can I nourish my body, increase my health. And I have an article up here. I want to kind of just peek at the history of the that girl trend because like you're saying, we're having a reinvention of these different trends. And this is definitely, it feels like a step up from just like straight up your body has to look this way to now your behavior has to look this way. So we went from body to behavior And then maybe we can kind of create a proposal for what might be a more optimal third trend. Yes, totally. Yeah, this is something that I actually talk about um, with my clients a lot is is assigning morality in general. (laughs) I honestly believe that assigning morality to anything to do with health, but really a lot of things in the world at all, like assigning morality to anything can be not that helpful. And what I mean by that is like, you know, we used to assign, well, and we still do, but we're doing this less now, assign morality to the way someone looks. We still do that, but um, we're we're trying to kind of come away from that in the wellness space at least. Um, And so it's not as much what someone looks like, but then now it's like we're assigning morality to what someone does and what, and if someone is striving for health and it's like, wow, you're so good because you're striving for health. But while uh, like, I mean, (laughs) this is what I do. I'm a health coach. I literally help people strive for health. I'm all about it. It's, you know, if it's what you want to do, but you are not any better or worse if you are striving for health or if you are not striving for health. So I want to just put that out there before we even dive into the rest of it, because I think that can be such a light bulb moment of like, oh, I'm actually not bad if I 
don't do all the healthy things or I'm actually not better than anyone else if I am doing all the healthy things. It's a helpful frame frame of mind. It's a reframe. And before I do piggyback to kind of the history of the that girl is I want to really make sure that we understand what you're saying about assigning morality. And so that's kind of a complex, kind of confusing thing to understand and wrap our minds around. So if you had to explain that to a fourth grader, how would you define, like, what do you mean by assigning morality? <laughs> yeah. So it's essentially just labeling something as good or bad. That's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, this is good. This is bad. We do it with Uh, bodies we do it with types of food um and even like uh, some of the programming that i've seen for like teaching kids about nutrition is actually slightly problematic in that they're teaching kids like this is like a a red food which is like bad stop um a green food which is like good go um, you know, and, and it can be helpful to be like, and then there's like yellow foods, which are like slow, go slow or whatever, um, which can be helpful. But when we're in diet culture so much, it can perpetuate it, um, more. And so what I would rather see is like, how does this food actually make you feel? Do you feel cloudy afterwards? Do you have less mental clarity? Do you feel lethargic and like, Ugh. you know, bringing, bringing more awareness to that. And then, and then also not assigning morality. So not saying this is good or bad with how you feel even because, <laughs> because sometimes people, people will be like, Oh no, I feel crappy after I ate this thing. I'm so bad for eating this thing and now feeling crappy. Like we don't have to feel bad about that either. (laughs) And it's actually counterproductive because it will result in more of that like deprivation and binge cycle of, oh, you know, now I feel guilty. Now I'm going to deprive myself. And then once we get to a certain point where we've been depriving ourselves for too long, then we binge and then we feel guilty. And then we repeat that cycle over and over and over again. Mm Mm-hmm. The deprivation and binge cycle, yeah, and that comes from a place of assigning morality and aligning with the objective, like, this is good or this is bad or I feel good or I feel bad. And so when we start with this diet culture mindset and then we judge it and our success and how we feel based on some sort of, like, objective, unattainable measure, it can then create this deprivation, binge cycle, deprivation, binge cycle. Exactly. That's fascinating. I think that's really interesting. And so it's like, where did this come from? And so I have an article uh, from Bustle, and they talk about the that girl isn't, of course, any girl in particular, but they describe how it's a vague sort of wellness archetype that became popular on TikTok around April of 2021. And there's over 800 million views of this hashtag of that girl. And so what's happening is, especially over the summer, is that we get caught in this, like, lifestyle community where creators are uploading how-to guides. They're posting um, criticisms on don't be the that girl, uh, actually improve your life. Other people are posting, like, yes, be that girl because it's a healthy focus, like you're focusing on being healthy. And, you know, so... It feels like the that girl trend has gone to all these different corners of the internet. Totally. Where it's like, this is good, this is bad, but it's like circling back to what you're saying. It's like <laughs> we're applying morality to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people, the people who are criticizing it are like, well, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. And then the people who are, you know, lauding it are like, oh, well, it's good. But like, in, and we've talked about this before where we need nuance. <laughs> yeah. We just need to look at it for what it is. And, you know, is it helpful for people? Um, maybe for some people it is really helpful. And for some people it isn't that helpful. And, you know, we kind of have to discern that for ourselves and we can do that from a place of not assigning morality. We don't have to get like fanatical about it. We don't have to be like, this is bad. This is good. And this, that's, if you do tend to do that, just know, like, I feel you because that's my tendency. And that's why I'm so passionate about not doing it (laughs) with health and wellness, because I used to all the time. Like these were all of my tendencies. Um, you know, I wanted to be that girl and I couldn't be that girl because I was trying so hard to be. And then I was doing the all or nothing mentality of, 
okay, I'm, I'm either going to do all of the things in the morning, the, you know, the morning routine, all of that. And if I don't do it, then, well, the day is ruined and I'm going to, you know, wait until tomorrow or Monday or the new year or whatever it was. Um, and now that I've l- like let that go, now my morning routine looks like the that girl routine, <laughs> but oh. I'm not posting about it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the shift for you? Because it seems like the objective behaviors look similar, but the big shift is internally for you. Yeah, totally. And again, you know, maybe I will post like my morning routine at some point, but you know, I actually don't have my phone on me until much later because it's for me. Like like the, my morning routine is for me. Um and it's actually for my mental wellness, not for posting it and, you know, showing it off to someone else. And it's not that aesthetic. Like my morning routine is like doing all of these things. You know, it. I wake up, I um, drink a ton of water, but I don't do like the, you know, I don't have it in like a cute glass with like the lemon. And so I just, I just boil or I don't boil. I like warm up some water and then I chug some water and go to the bathroom. And then I, you know, do some, maybe some meditation. Um, maybe I'll just go right to the gym, but it's not like this big, beautiful thing all the time. (laughs) Most, most of the time, like all the time. (laughs) Um, and and it's, it's for me. I love my morning routine. It's amazing. And if I had to post it all the time, I wouldn't like it, I don't think. <laughs> if you posted it and posted it without the filters and the lemon and just posted it like it is what it is, mm-hmm. is it still the that girl or is it Ooh, a not a that a good girl? question. What like constitutes it becoming a the that girl? Yeah, that's a good question. I... When I was looking into like the the trend and stuff, because you guys, I'm not very trendy. I don't really know very much <laughs> about trends. <laughs> I have to say, um, when I was looking into it, though, it's m- a lot of them are like you know avocado toast and you know a, like a latte with nut milk or you know some sort of green juice or or whatever, and. That, this is one other thing that I wanted to bring up with it is that, you know, all of all of these things are like a lot of them are not accessible for people and they're like very much a privilege thing. Um, and, you know, and so that makes it so that it, it's not accessible and people can be like, well, I can't even do that. So I'm not even going to try to be healthy, which not a fan of that. Um, but I think. Yeah, I wonder if we could if we could make up a new trend like hashtag real that girl. <laughs> real that girl. Mm. Right? Like the not aesthetic that girl. <laughs> yeah. And by kind of taking up this like need for aestheticism, mm-hmm. is that a word? I don't know. It sounded good. Yeah. Taking up the need for it to be aesthetic, <laughs> it it kind of I feel like takes this external perspective, this externalization of a process that's intended to be like very deeply nourishing and accepting like okay this morning I have halitosis and my eye is glue shut but I'm gonna drink a whole bunch of water and I'm gonna post a picture of me and my real I'm hydrating and nourishing Mm -hmm. and so then it would be like a real that girl it's like I'm doing the habits of the that girl, but I'm doing it in a way that is all about me and taking care of me and nourishing me yeah. as opposed to perpetuating an archetype or perpetuating an image or perpetuating like a way of life that may be unattainable and unrealistic and maybe incongruent with my internal experience off camera. Right. Yeah. I think that's the other thing is are the are the people who are posting about it like actually getting, you know, the benefit from doing the things or are they just going through the motions? And I can't say, you know, I'm not here to say like yeah, either either way, but um it's something to think about and we have to be discerning about that on social media, you know. Social media in general is like all of the highlight reels of everyone's life. Uh and so we want to, you know, be mindful of that uh as well because, you know, there are mornings that you just, you don't feel great. And that's okay. That's another piece of like the health morality thing is like, um, 
I feel like especially recently, it's been in the past couple of years, it's like if you don't feel great all the time, then you're doing something wrong or bad. And that's not the case. Like sometimes we just don't feel that great and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So instead of putting it and assigning a morality to yeah. how I feel, yeah. it is what it is. Cause I was writing notes as you were talking. And so you were talking about assigning morality. Mm-hmm. And again, this is, this is good or this is bad. We're, yeah. we're saying my that girl activities are good or bad or eating avocado toast is good or bad (laughs) or eating Captain Crunch for breakfast is good or bad. Assigning morality. And then we could also assign morality, as you said, Hadley, to how I feel. Like, I feel good this morning. Exactly, yeah. As opposed to, oh, this morning I don't have much energy. This is data from my body. I think I need to rest. Yes, exactly, yeah. And, And I'm a huge fan of taking stock of how you feel so that you can then, you know, do something about it or you intentionally choose, you know, not to, whatever, that's fine too. No, no good or bad here. Um, But essentially we can actually look at it through a lens of curiosity rather than a lens of judgment. Mm. It's like curiosity over judgment is kind of the, the name of the game here because with judgment, judgment is you know, assigning morality is saying this is good or this is bad. Or, you know, maybe it's not good or bad. Maybe it's this is right and this is wrong. There's a wrong way to do things and there's a right way to do things. I love and that. That's not necessarily true either. And I can, I can definitely feel that way, you know, because I like things being pretty. Yeah. I love aesthetics. Mm -hmm. I love looking at people's posts and I'm like, oh my gosh, like you just look so beautiful and peaceful. And I would love to look and feel that way. And so curiosity over judgment versus right versus wrong versus like, I have this desire. I have this kind of part of me that's very romantic and I want to romanticize things. And one thing that you were saying before we started recording today is that there can actually be a benefit to the romanticization. Yeah. Yeah, I actually talk about this with my clients because sometimes um, sometimes we can get into sort of this mindset of like, oh my gosh, I have all these habits that I'm like supposed to do, quote unquote, supposed to do. And it's like a chore list, right? It's a to-do list. We just have to check all the things off. But instead, with habits or with anything else, how can we... if if we romanticize some parts of our lives like this, like, you know, like what the, that girl trend is doing, it can actually make life a lot more fulfilling and more fun and more beautiful. And we can feel really present in those moments and really, you know, I just, I I love the idea of why not romanticize as much as we possibly can in our lives, you know, like we're just here to live our lives. So let's just enjoy those moments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so if you're posting a picture and you want to have the most beautiful avocado toast and you want to look really beautiful, mm-hmm. you can still be a beautiful put together real that girl so long as mm. that internal exper- experience, that internal way of looking at it is in alignment with your highest self, which yes. is what we're all about here. I love it. Yes. So basically it just means you're not going through the motions. It's you're allowing yourselves you're allowing yourself to be like permeated by the experience. That's kind of how I look at it is like allowing yourself to be affected because so many times I have gone through the motions in my life with health and wellness and, and other things, but I'm not allowing myself to be affected by the wonderful things that I'm doing. They just, they just feel bland, right? So if we were to create a new definition of the real that girl, yeah, yeah. she is someone or he is someone mm-hmm. who doesn't just go through the motions, but rather they allow the motions, the experiences to permeate them, fill them with curiosity and allow them opportunities for deep and profound transformation. I love it. Yeah. 
There's your definition. There's your definition. New of trend. The real that girl. Real that girl. <laughs> so hashtag it. Like, so if you're posting pictures of yourself and you look amazing and you hashtag real that girl, talk about how you're being transformed by that. Mm, yeah. Or if I want to post a selfie of myself, like horking back coffee with one eye glued shot <laughs> and I hashtag real that girl, that's amazing too. Totally. Because yeah. it's all about the internal experience. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, I wanted to add one little fun fact to the romanticization, romanticization. I don't know that word either. (laughs) Words are hard. Um, To making it kind of romantic. Because one thing I really want to emphasize is I'm not, and Hadley's not saying, like, stop posting beautiful pictures online. Like, we all love your beautiful pictures. Keep them coming. They're they're awesome. We love, we all love beauty. That's a, that's an innate beauty piece of being a human being yes <laughs> and beauty can make us actually feel good mm-hmm. and so i was talking to hadley earlier about this phenomenon called dopamine dressing yes and i don't know what it is guys yeah she wouldn't tell me before this so i'm hearing it for the first time too. I was like, stay tuned <laughs> so dopamine dressing is where you can dress yourself in such a way that makes you feel good and it changes your neurochemical levels of dopamine mm. so that you have more dopamine and you feel even better so if you're having a lousy morning and you're being inspired by that girl trending and you're like oh my gosh like if i ate a beautiful avocado toast instead of just scrambling them up and plopped a glob of avocado on the side (laughs) and then i'm gonna like put on my favorite linen outfit and i'm gonna stretch because that will fill you that's dopamine dressing like dressing yourself in beautiful things that make you feel good and so real that girls can look just as good or maybe even better Because they're actually nurturing their dopamine levels. They're nurturing themselves and filling Mm. themselves with bliss and happiness. But the focus is how is it taking care of you? Totally. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yay. Awesome. Okay, so hashtag real that girl. Hashtag dopamine dressing. Hashtag dopamine dressing. (laughs) Yes. And so again, dopamine dressing, not good or bad. Mm. Just if if it's useful for you, you can take it. If it's not useful for you. You don't have to take it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I learned a new trend today, y'all. <laughs> well, I learned a new thing, too. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for checking out our podcast. It's been so fun to have Hadley here. Hadley is an amazing health coach, Ayurveda expert. I am oh, I am not an Ayurveda expert because I can't even say the word correctly. <laughs> for some reason, for like 15 We've been years, working on it. I've been saying it incorrectly. <laughs> Ayurveda. Ayurveda. Yeah. Ayurveda. It's yeah. not I, my Veda, but I, your Veda. So y'all, we're not editing this out because we're all about being real and authentic Hashtag here. Hashtag real that girl. Hashtag real <laughs> that girl. That's so true. This is Dr. Nicole Kane, and my passion is to help you become your own mental health expert. And so this topic came from Hadley today. She's all about bringing it to the table. So if there's other conversations that you want us to have or questions that you have, let us know because we're totally excited about talking about anything that you want to talk about pertaining to emotional wellness, authenticity, also authenticity, and physical wellness. Yeah. So excited. So excited to be talking to you guys today. And let us know. Let us know how you like this podcast and if you want more like it or if you want anything else. Awesome. Thanks, Hadley. Thank you. Talk soon. The recording you just listened to consists of the personal opinions of Dr. Nicole Kane, a naturopathic doctor with a master's in clinical psychology, and Happy Healthy Hadley an Ayurveda expert with a master's in health behavior and health education. While these opinions are based upon literature, counseling, education, medical training, and clinical experience, this content should not be viewed as the definitive opinion on these subjects. Listening to this podcast is not a substitute for any sort of medical, psychological, or other form of treatment. If you are in a crisis, please call 911 or call the National Suicide Prevention Line at 1-800-273-8255. If you are in need of counseling, don't hesitate to make an appointment with a counselor in your area. 
Dr. Nicole and Hadley are passionate about you becoming the expert of your own emotional and physical well-being. If this resonates with you and you think this podcast would help someone you love, please share it with them. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Holistic Inner Balance Podcast.